The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus noticed tax collect, a tax collector, Levi, by name, sitting by the customs house, and said to him, Follow me. And leaving everything, he got up and followed him. In his honor, Levi held a great reception in his house. And with them at table was a large gathering of tax collectors and others. The Pharisees and their scribes complained to his disciples and said, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus said to them in reply, It's not those who are well who need the doctor but the sick. I have not come to call the virtues, but sinners to repentance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is declaring a great message today. Jesus has come to this world in search of sinners. And that is why Jesus called Levi. He is a tax collector. It is Matthew himself. And he is a tax collector. And he was sitting in the tax booth. And was doing the tax collection. And tax collectors are considered as um, the sinners, the worst sinners of Israel. They are out of the synagogues. They are out of the presence of the Israelites. And that's how the tax collectors are. They are considered the worst sinners. And now, when Jesus is taking an option of selecting his disciples, he has decided the first thing that came to his mind is to select these sinners. He selected them. It is not Levi went after Jesus and said, please select me, please select me, please choose me. But it is Jesus who came after Levi and said, you are chosen. This message is a message for each and every one of you. Maybe you are considering yourself good for nothing. Maybe you are considering yourself, oh, they all are very good people. They all are saints. They are all so, so prayerful. They go to church. But I'm a sinner. I'm the worst sinner. I'm addicted to this sin. I'm addicted to that sin. I don't think God will bless me. But today, the Lord is coming to your home and speaking to you and say, I choose you. All these years, it was you who were going to Jesus, going to God, to the church. And many of you were not feeling like going. Many of you were not interested in going. Many of you were feeling guilty, so they didn't go to the church. Now, during this pandemic time, God is coming to your home. God is coming to your home and say, I choose you. So my dear brothers and sisters, all those who are listening to me, wherever you are, now this season is season of God's calling. He is coming to your home. He is coming to you wherever you are. In the room where you live, the place where you stay, the place where you work, the place even where you commit sin. He is coming to that place. And he is coming and inviting you, choosing you. I have chosen you. Follow me. It's your response. So what did Levi do? We read like this in the word of God. And leaving everything he got up. We read Gospel Luke chapter 5 verse 27. Leaving everything he got up. And he followed him. Verse 28. We read like this. And he got up, left everything and followed him. So what does it mean? If anybody wants to follow Jesus, you have to leave your life situation. What kind of life situation? The sins that he was into. The tax collection, the desire. Why he was extra, collecting extra tax? Because he had his own dreams. His own dreams. His own plannings. His own dreams about his future. And he had to give up everything. If anybody wants to follow you, it's a U-turn. 
If you were walking like this, now you have to walk like this. I remember when I was uh, joining the seminary and I was forcing my parents, I want to go, I want to join and my father was against it but he tried to prevent it but I was so stubborn that I wanted to go and become a priest and at the end they permitted. One of the reasons they didn't want me to go because they didn't want to miss me. They, they knew once I joined the seminary, it is once and for all. Once I go to the seminary and no more his presence will be in the house and he may come once in a while only for week or um, holy days and that is only for one week or two weeks after that he will go so he is only 15 years old so we are going to miss him once and for all that is what they thought and that is the reason they stopped they said no my dear brothers and sisters i did not think all these things and i didn't even think of missing them I started missing them only after I joined the seminary. And I never thought of missing them before that. Before that, I had only one dream. My desire was just to leave and, and go and become a priest. But the first day, I remember after joining the seminary, the first day when evening came, when the dark surrounded, darkness surrounded, the first thing I felt was I missed my mom and dad. And I, my eyes were still filled with tears. I remember even now, and I could not sleep. I was just turning around on my bed, and I, wanted to, I was thinking, tomorrow morning itself, I will go and I will tell my director, rector, I want to go home, back home. Because I was really feeling missing them. And I was started to think, how long I am going to miss? This is once and for all. And I've, when am I going to enjoy with them the plays, the games that we had and all these things, I lost it. I didn't think, it, think about it before joining the seminary. And then I wanted to say goodbye to the seminary and go back that first day. I remember the first day. And then I continued laying, uh, lying down left and right, to look, uh, turning around, but I could not even sleep. Then I walk, got up and I was walking outside on the corridor just at almost 12 o'clock at midnight. Then I saw my rector. In his room there was light. He was reading something. Then I went and knocked at the door. And he opened the door and I came inside. He asked what happened. And then I started crying and said, I want to go home. And then my rector told me, I remember now. He looked at the watch and he said, it is almost 12.30. It is too late. You won't get any bus. And do one thing. You go and sleep t today. Tomorrow morning, you can go. I will arrange everything. And then he went back. And I, I was happy. I went to my room. Um, and I went to a day bed. And I slept peacefully. Because I knew tomorrow I will go back. But the next day morning. And I remember when the light came. Everyone started, all the, friends, all the boys who joined the seminary, we were almost 30 of us. And the director said, okay, today is the day of games for you. You can have all the games and football. Those who want to play football, you can do that. Those who want to play the carom board, you can do that. So he gave freedom because those were the first days of uh, our seminary. So he was very generous. And then since I saw everyone was playing, then I started playing with those boys and I made friendship with them. And then the evening came. Again, I was feeling like going back home. And again, I started to think, I am going to miss them forever. This is the end. I will not be able to see and be with my mother if I, and father if I continue like this. How long I can, can, am I able to continue in this life? So many things were disturbing me. But I did not ask my uh, uh, father, I mean the, uh, the rector, that I want to go that day. And somehow within two, three days, I was settled. And then I remember my rector, one day he saw me and he said, you wanted to go on the first day. Are you not going? Then I said, no, I decided to stay. So my dear brothers and sisters, if you follow Jesus, you have to take a step. It's a radical step. You turn. Many things which you were enjoyed, many things you were so fond of, many things which you are holding on, 
many people who were so close to you and so attached to your heart you may have to say goodbye once and for all it may be painful for you but you will have to say goodbye and only then there is a true change this is only what what i share with you about my vocation my join the seminary it is only a physical aspect physical aspect for example i lo i separated myself from my family and my friendships my games and all those things that i have joined the seminary and i'm a priest now but that everyone can do that but there is also something that is more important there are so many attachments we have in our heart that dreams that we have for example dreams to be rich all those things and all there are so many other dreams that we which are driving us and there are also so many attachments fame and name desire to be known to everyone desire to control everyone and desire to be appreciated and loved by everyone there are so many driving forces inside if you really want to follow jesus you may have to say goodbye to all these things that is the most painful one the most painful one for example in my case leaving my family though it was painful for me then but i know if i want i can go back any time it is not a sin go back to see my father and mother and come back again if any holy day time vacation time i can go and meet them but in the case of following jesus in the case of following jesus remember if you are into some kind of sinful pleasures you may have to say goodbye once and for all you can't go back once in a while when you get a holiday go and have come uh, go and uh, do some commit sin and come back no this following is complete and here levi the moment he was called instantly he got up he left everything behind he left everything behind and he followed jesus he never turned back my dear brothers and sisters today the lord is inviting you wherever you are are you ready to follow me i am coming to your home i am in your home now i'm talking to you in your home not in any church i have come inside of your home in your hand if you are watching in the mobile phone or tv or computer wherever you are remember i am in front of you and calling you i have chosen you follow me are you ready to give up everything that you are clinging on are you ready to give up everything that is and uh, separating you from god every wrong relationship every attachment every possessiveness that you are into give up once and for all and follow me so my dear brothers and sisters this is what matthew did this is what peter all the disciples did you may go back sometimes you may fall into the sin again for example peter and john james they left everything they had net and everything they followed jesus because even when they followed jesus they had their own dreams they had their own dreams and and their they have their own plans but and when every plan and every dream collapsed they again went back to the fishing and they back to their sin what does it mean if you have your own plans that means you have not given up your bad habits completely so in fact when did these matthew peter john and james completely separated from this world that it was after the death of jesus after the resurrection of jesus after the holy spirit came came upon them after the pentecost experience until then though they were following jesus leaving their net and net and their father and mother they followed jesus but in their heart they had not followed jesus they went back to the old self what does it mean they were still holding on to their past life that is not true conversion it is not true following when did they start following the true following started where after the pentecost and now you can see all the 12 disciples they left their hometown they left their family left their pa parents everyone all of them went to different countries not even coming back they all died in different places peter died in rome 
and uh, and uh, died in spain and thomas died in india and all of them they left once and for all all the comfort zones of the family and everything complete a complete u turn in their life no more turning back my dear brothers and sisters we are all followers of jesus many of us are doing ministry of the word of god many of us are going to the church regularly but do we really and truly follow up jesus have we given up maybe you must have given up just like i left my father and mother and everyone and followed just like at the same way you also must have given up many people and have followed but that is not the true following true following is coming inside there are so many other things which we have to give up so many desire for fame and name and power position controlling and all these things so many dreams we have to give up give up if you really want to follow jesus radically and you have to follow and focus only on jesus with without jesus nothing else so if we read like this in the word of god first corinthians first corinthians we read in the word of god verse 2 chapter 2 was one onwards chapter 2 was one onwards when i came to you brothers and sisters i did not come proclaiming the mystery of god to you in lofty words of wisdom can in us too for i desired to know nothing among you except jesus christ and him crucified saint paul a teacher studied under gamaliel very powerful full of wisdom knowledge he says after he had a conversion remember saint paul's conversion was once and for all unlike peter and other disciples peter and other disciples though they had a in initial call they went back and there was a second call and with the second call and with the anointing of the holy spirit they followed they were perfect their following was perfect but in the case of saint paul his call and the anointing happened together and it was a complete u turn in his life he had fame and name he had authority in the government in the roman government and also in the sanhedrin and also among the pharisees and sadducees he was connected to the high priest and he had soldiers under him he had the right to kill people and control people chase people and enter into any family any house any time he had all the authority he had all the power but when he had a god experience what did he do he gave up everything from then he was tortured he was flogged he was insulted he was abused he was left alone he was hurt he was chased but he was not bothered he was not worried he said nothing will separate me from the love of jesus christ and he said for i desired to know nothing among you except jesus christ and him crucified i don't want to know anything else i don't want to enter into any politics any unnecessary conversation anything else i just want to know only about jesus christ this was the plan of saint paul my dear brothers and sisters that is called radical calling following of jesus we are missing it my dear brothers and sisters we still have our own ideas our own ambitions that is why we have arguments we have unforgiveness jealousy between each other not able to work together as one community one family who love each other even when we do the ministry jealousy confusion anger irritation my dear brothers and sisters it is a clear sign we are not following god we are not following jesus we are following ourselves we have created our own gods and our own goals and we are following it so we need to know one thing until unless we make a u turn in our life say goodbye to many things we which we are holding on to many plannings and dreams that we are dreaming about unless and until we say goodbye to all these we are not true followers of jesus christ we are only a humiliation for jesus christ in front of all the other religions we are the biggest abomination for jesus 
if we don't follow jesus christ radically my dear brothers and sisters this is something that we need to remember when we are in the presence of god praise the lord thank you jesus praise you jesus thank you father praise you father so my dear brothers and sisters ask forgiveness from god for all the sins we have committed and promise to him lord we are sorry for those moments where we have not followed you radically but only for the name sake we receive baptism we receive the sacraments and we think we are following you but our life has not changed uh, we are doing the same thing which the gentiles are doing we have the same selfishness which the the others do have sometimes they have they are better than us we have more selfishness more individualism more groupism more hatred but at the same time we call ourselves christians and following christ lord we are adding sorrow to you we read like this in the word of god hebrew chapter 10 verse 25 and 26 we read verse 26 hebrew chapter 20, uh, 10 26 if we willfully persist in sin after having received the knowledge of the truth there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins for if we willfully persist in sin after having received the knowledge of the truth there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins verse 27 but a fearful prospect of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries my dear brothers and sisters when we know unforgiveness is cannot be accepted it is a devilish anyone who has got unforgiveness has the spirit of evil but still we can keep keep continue unforgiveness we persist in sin we know gossip is a sin it is dangerous but we still persist in sin still we do it we know hatred anger revenge and there are so many other sins which are evil which will by doing so by by keeping such sins we are keeping room for the devil inside it is dangerous for our soul it is against christianity against the body of christ but still we persist in doing it the bible says very clearly if you persist in sin verse 26 let's read once again if you willfully persist in sin after having received the knowledge of the truth there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins then the death of jesus also cannot save us because we persist in sin this is called sin against the holy spirit because we don't want to change even after knowing the truth we continue doing it praise the lord, praise the lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah and we become hard hearted a heart will become hearted a hardened this is what happened to pharaoh though god was performing miracles and sun signs in front of him 10 mighty signs were done in front of pharaoh but he hardened his heart and then he ended up in the red sea my dear brothers and sisters how many miracles you witnessed how many times interventions of god you witnessed how many healings how often god blessed you and protected you from dangers still it is not touching us is still it is not changing us is still we don't feel like kneeling down and cry and still we persist in sin my dear brothers and sisters this is the danger of christianity let us read once again for if we willfully persist in sin after having received the knowledge of the truth there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins you know the biggest sacrifice for sin that is the christ sacrifice and now the lord says saint paul and the, the apostle says through this word of god now if you willfully persist in sin then 
no more sacrifice not even the sacrifice of jesus can help you but only one thing is waiting for you verse 27 but a fearful prospect of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries we read like this in the word of god hebrew chapter 6 verse 4 hebrew chapter 6 verse 4 it is impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once been enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the holy spirit it is impossible to restore again you know it's very difficult for those people especially the preachers those who are doing ministry those who are 24 hours in the word of god if they commit sin if they go away again away away from the presence of god it is very difficult to bring them back to the repentance because they were already enlightened they knew the whole bible they have bible study they do personal bible study private and public bible study they go on listening singing worshiping and also preaching but at the same time continue falling into the same sin of every sin the lord says it is impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once been enlightened that is why my dear brothers and sisters the biggest fall happens to those who are close to god you know why because the devil will attack them more more than anyone else because you are in the path of salvation you are coming closer to God. You are going to be powerful. You are going to be an evangelist. You are going to bring changes in this world which the devil doesn't want. We read in the word of God. The Bible says very clearly. So when you get a chance, the Lord wants us to repent. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. James chapter 3 was 1. James chapter 3 was 1 not many of you should become teachers my brothers and sisters for you know that we who teach will be judged with the greater strictness my dear brothers and sisters the biggest fear always i have is this because the more i learn the bible the more i'm responsible i should be responsible the more i know the bible the more i read and understand the more responsibility I have to keep it. That is why it is dangerous to be a teacher and preacher. Especially not about sociology, science and the other the teaching. But teaching the word of God. We all want to do ministry. But remember there is a danger that is connected to it. We don't. I am not frightening anyone and discouraging anyone. But if you take up this responsibility to enter into a ministry, there is also a big responsibility to have a U-turn in your life. Otherwise it is dangerous. Even if you are getting frightened, no problem. Because it is to save you. My dear brothers and sisters, this is something that we need to remember. If you really want to follow Jesus, there are many people who want to do ministry. Many people, you know I always remember, there are so many ministries of God. You know Jesus, the charitable activities which Jesus used to do. Jesus used to help the poor people. That is why in the, at the time of Last Supper, Jesus told Judas, Judas. I mean, the, when Jesus told Judas to do what he's supposed to do, the people thought, the other disciples thought, Judas used to have the money purse. And he used to help the poor people. Because helping the poor people was a custom and culture of Jesus. Jesus used to, even though they don't have any income, they made sure to help the poor people. And he used to take care of the poor people. And he used to have show compassion and mercy for them. That is the ministry that Mother Teresa did. This ministry of consolation, washing, wiping the sick people, wounded people. Just like when Jesus touched the leper, it was exactly, this is exactly what Mother Teresa was doing. And Mother Teresa was the hand of Jesus. The finger of a Lord. And she was consoling sick people. Wiping their wounds. And cleaning them. And such a powerful ministry. Not many people are in the, imitating her. But at the same time. The preaching ministry. Because there are miracles and wonders and healings. That we are able to do. Many people want to imitate. 
because there is also glory in it this is something dangerous if you are really and truly following jesus follow jesus in both in both examine your conscience and see what is our intention in following jesus praise the lord thank you jesus praise to jesus hallelujah thank you father so my dear brothers and sisters not many of you should become teachers my brothers and sisters for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness let's close our eyes and repent of all the sins that we have committed especially not following jesus radically but still we are we are telling everyone that we are christians but at the same time we are not practicing anything that jesus told us to do let's ask forgiveness from god and tell him lord we are sorry we must have there are many people who seems to be very prayerful holy going to the church regularly but not even talking to their beloved siblings and family members there are many people who so called charismatics who use the rosary in the hand and big crosses in the head and neck and everywhere so many prayer books and carry the prayer books in and bibles in the bag but not when they speak at home the words that is coming out cannot be even mentioned here my dear brothers and sisters we are the biggest abomination for the lord we need to repent and we need to have a, a radical decision tonight during this lenten season let us take a strong decision to follow jesus radically there are many people whose name is matthew abraham isaac and john james joseph but when they speak in every sentence they use swearing words in every conversation there is gossiping and complaining my dear brothers and sisters are we making jesus ashamed of us we are making jesus to bow down in front of all the religions in this world jesus is still on mount calvary dying for us and shedding blood for us he's you know he's still going through this penance he's still being sacrificed his death is once and for all that is why we are able to receive communion holy communion eucharist every day in our daily in the eucharist he died for us once and for all his death is available today he suffer even today that is why we read again hebrew chapter 6 verse 5 we read like this and have tasted the goodness of the word of god and the powers of the age to come verse 6 four to six and then have fallen away since on their own they are crucifying again the son of god and are holding him up to contempt every time when i commit sin and repeat the sin i am crucifying jesus again and again that means jesus he is suffering even now because of our sins my dear brothers and sisters we need to ask forgiveness from god and say lord we are sorry praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah in the language of saint paul the letter written to romans he says through one man sin came into the world and because of sin death spread to everyone that man was adam and now the new adam that is jesus through his obedience the power to conquer death and sin has come into the world the path of salvation is now open to everyone so through this person called jesus the world has got the power to conquer sin and death in our lives if jesus has given us victory over sin and death over all kinds of evil things then why are we seeing evil being perpetrated yet why are we seeing sinful things being carried out in the world if jesus has given us victory then why all such things are happening we know that all around the world so many sinful things being done 
Sometimes we think the world has become more sinful than it was. The wicked things have increased like never before. That's what often the impression we get. Corruption has increased. There are all kinds of powers of evil that is, that is roaming around. There is the power of anger, bitterness. We know that there are people who are not talking to each other for many years. There are communities that are at war at, with each other. There are nations that are getting ready to have war with each other. So we know the power of hatred, the power of anger and revenge. So much explicit in the world. Even in our own families, we are able to experience the power of anger and bitterness. The power of lust. We know so many sexual perversions being carried out. So many unfortunate news that we come to listen. The power of greed. For the sake of money, people killing, stealing and robbing. People who have lost all kinds of consciousness. So how do we interpret this? Or how do we understand this? If Jesus has given us victory, if he through his death and resurrection has given us victory over sin and death, then how to see all these things, all these events taking place in the world? My dear brothers and sisters, what has happened through the resurrection of Jesus is this. Humankind has got the power to conquer sin in their personal life. The question is this, have we opened ourselves to the power and the glory of this victory? If we have opened ourselves to this power, to this glory, to this victory, then definitely we would experience that in our life in a very explicit way. We know we are people who are struggling with many of our personal sins. We have decided many times not to get angry anymore or not to harbor bitterness against anyone anymore we want to talk to others we want to get reconciled to others we don't want to have the power of envy in our heart but we are jealous we are gossiping we are speaking about people at their back many such things that we are doing the sexual perversions in our life many times we have decided not to go into those activities but again and again we are going into those activities the sins of thoughts or actions or our words or omissions we are not able to control ourselves if we are not able to experience this power of the Lord in an explicit way then this is what we understand we have not yet opened our lives to this power that has come into the world we read from the book of Acts a very beautiful incident that the church is bringing before us it's about Peter and John who healed a crippled beggar now after they healed the crippled beggar they are being brought to the council and they are being questioned and the very first sentence that we heard is this chapter 4 verse 13 now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men they were amazed a very explicit transformation has taken place in the life of Peter. We know what happened before the death or resurrection of Jesus. The same Peter denied Jesus because he was afraid, was full of fear. And therefore he denied the Lord three times. Even when the Lord had told him that you would deny him, it was there in his mind. And yet he denied because so much was the fear which was dominating his mind. Now the word of the Lord says, after the resurrection, after receiving the power of resurrection, the same Peter has become so bold, so courageous, that people are amazed. Even being uneducated, even being illiterate, how they are able to quote the scripture, how are they able to speak with so much of force, they were amazed totally. The work or the power of Jesus is at work. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to talk about this courage that one gets 
when he or she opens to the power of resurrection. We become courageous. We become bold. We are not talking about a value, a secular value. We are talking about courage and boldness in terms of Jesus Christ. This is what the command Jesus gave to his disciples. We read Gospel of St. Mark chapter 16. And he said to them, Go into the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. This is the mandate the disciples are receiving from Jesus, from the resurrected Jesus. You have to go to the world and you have to proclaim the good news. Good news, again, is not some stories, some good stories or some good moral values. Bible is not talking about that. When Bible says good news, it means crucified Jesus. That's what St. Paul says. The gospel that I'm proclaiming to you is crucified Jesus. It is not some stories or the wisdom of the world. I'm not talking to you about that. For that, there are so many places. We know in the world today, there are so many places where we can go and listen about some moral values or some conferences, some meetings, some stories. But when we are turning to the church, we are coming to listen about the crucified Lord. This is the mission that Jesus is giving to his disciples, to the church. Go and proclaim about the crucified Lord. And for that, we need a lot of courage and boldness. It's not an easy task. To speak to the world about Jesus, we need courage, we need boldness, which we are seeing in the life of Peter. Now, what is courage according to Bible? Or what is this fortitude, the gift of the Holy Spirit? The gift of fortitude or the gift of courage is, I'm fearless in times of hostility. Now what I'm doing right now does not need any courage. What I'm doing right now does not need any boldness. Because I'm speaking to a crowd who wants to listen about the Lord. You have all come here willing, willingly to listen about Jesus. To speak to such a crowd, no one needs any courage or boldness. But to speak to a crowd that does not want to listen about Jesus, that is indifferent, or someone who is, who is hating or who does not want to know about the Lord, to speak, about, to, speak to such people, we need courage and boldness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So for example, we hear about the martyrs. The martyrs who shed their blood for the sake of Jesus. Who even did not regard their life as important when it comes to the matter of Jesus. So in the first century, in the Roman Empire, so many Christians were martyred. They lost their life for the sake of Jesus. In a hostile world, they were holding on to who Jesus is and what Jesus is. They did not compromise. In a hostile world, they did not compromise with the teachings about Jesus. They kept on saying that Jesus is the one God. They're living in a time when the emperor has to be worshipped. The emperor is God. But they very plainly opposed it. They said, it's Jesus who is the only God. And for that, they had to lose their life. Now, we are living in a world or we are living in a country where we don't have to lose our life for practicing Christianity or for following Jesus. We are living in a free country. We can practice any religion. And therefore, maybe we don't have to suffer in that same way as martyrs suffered. But even today, when we are living in such a favorable situation, we need courage and boldness to go after Jesus. Without courage and boldness, we cannot proclaim the message that Jesus wants us to proclaim. For we know that if we decide to radically follow Jesus, if we are deciding to radically follow Jesus, then we will have to come out of our comfort zones. That's very clear. 
we'll have to lose many of our conveniences we'll have to lose many of our comforts if we decide to follow Jesus hundred percent it's easy to follow Jesus maybe in a 50 50 way or in a 90 percent or 10 percent way but the moment we decide to follow Jesus hundred percent then it becomes extremely difficult for example in our workplace or the business that we are doing I've heard many people saying this father it's not possible to do business and then to follow Jesus hundred percent because in my business it is it is understood that I have to resort to many such practices that are corrupt so it's not impossible to follow Jesus and also to do the business so some kind of compromise is needed somewhere many of us go with that kind of perspective some kind of adjustments can be done and therefore we are not disturbed we prefer to have that comfort zone and so we don't find following Christ a challenging thing to follow Christ needs a lot of courage and boldness maybe for the sake of Jesus I may have to lose my job or maybe I will lose the source of income because the income that I'm getting is because of a corrupt thing that I'm doing if I'm really following Jesus if he is the first one in my life then I will definitely say no to those things that the Lord does not like if I have submitted my entire life at the feet of the Lord then I cannot continue to walk on the ways of sin that's what st. Paul is teaching us how can you continue to be in sinful ways even after accepting the Lord it's impossible that means I have not opened my life to that power or to that glory of the Lord there are many things in my life that are more important than Lord it could be money and therefore in order to get that money I compromise with the teachings of the Lord or maybe it could be my name or my reputation so for example if I speak about Jesus others might think that I'm a fundamentalist or others might label me as an extremist I don't want that label and therefore I keep quiet I want to be known as a broad-minded person I want to be known as an open-minded person and therefore I talk about all gods in the same way in order to have that name in order to have that reputation I compromise with my faith or for example if I speak to this person maybe this person will not like and he or she will go away from me my beloved or my friend so for fear of not losing my friend or for fear of not losing this relationship I keep my mouth shut I don't speak about the Lord that's what we are saying even in this world in order to follow Jesus radically we need that courage and that courage and boldness comes when we entirely open our lives to his power or maybe we know that there are people around us who love to talk about others people who gossip or people who crack dirty jokes it could be in our workplace it could be in our neighborhood it could be in our relations now how do I face such situations do I just keep quiet and with that I just try to brush off that thing or in that time do I stand and say what you are saying does not match or does not go with the words of the Lord do I have that power and strength do I have that boldness to say or to speak in the in the person of Jesus I keep quiet or maybe I ignore I, I go away from that place because that person is more important to me I want to be in the good books of that person and therefore I don't say anything that he does not like or she does not like remember what Jesus says if you love anyone more than me you are not worthy of me that's where we are seeing we are saying that to follow Jesus needs a lot of courage and strength 
but often in the world today we are trying to domesticate our faith we are trying to reduce the feast of Easter maybe to some good moral values but this feast is something greater than that this feast is asking asking us the question have we opened our life to the resurrected Lord are we experiencing his power in our life I remember a testimony or an experience that was shared by a mother she came for the retreat and she came and she shared her experience she said her daughter was diagnosed with cancer and the cancer was in the uterus in the primary stages so when she went to the doctor they were abroad they were living in some European country when they went to the doctor the doctor said you see you have the sickness in uterus and the uterus has to be taken out or has to be removed so the doctor advised this girl this young girl maybe just 22 years old the doctor advised if you have the desire to have baby you go and have a relationship with your boyfriend get your get the baby and then we will remove the uterus this is the advice the doctor gave and when she heard a very young girl when she heard that she said I can't do that and the doctor was amazed why don't you want a child or a kid in your life she said of course I want then what's the problem so she said what you are saying is something against my faith the doctor was amazed the doctor was, was surprised and he asked where are you coming from what is your faith and she said I'm a Catholic and I have been raised with a Catholic teaching and according to Catholic faith this is a sin she was bold enough to say that and then she left that place she left the place she came for the retreat she requested the prayers she went back and the mother said this girl who had this sickness cancer in the uterus she did not go and do what what the doctor advised well that was the advice of science given to this young girl but she held on to the Lord she opened herself to the power of the Lord and what happened she received that healing touch she was healed totally of that cancer she got married she conceived and now she's the mother of a child that's what happened she was bold enough to receive the power of the Lord just as Peter we are living in that world now we know that our world is becoming more and more secular and when you stand for faith you are going to be mocked at you're going to be humiliated you're going to be asked where are you coming from from which planet you are coming from this is all something ordinary that is happening here contraception is not a sin or IVF is not a sin or homosexuality is not a sin these are the messages that we listen now more and more so when you stand for faith you are standing against a trend and to stand against the current needs a lot of courage and strength to go with the current to go with the flow is an easy thing to say what the world is saying does not need courage but to be the voice of Christ in this world we need a lot of boldness which comes only when we open ourselves to the power of Christ praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah hallelujah a great saint Saint Thomas Aquinas great doctor of the Catholic Church he once said if the highest aim of a captain is to preserve his ship then he would keep that ship in the port forever if the highest aim of a captain is to preserve his ship then he would always keep the ship in the port forever 
My dear brothers and sisters, what St. Thomas Aquinas is teaching is this. The mission of a Christian, the highest aim of a Christian is not safety. If we are looking for safety, then we can never practice Christianity. If we always want to be in our comfort levels, then we can never practice Christianity. The ship has been made to go into the sea. It is there where the ship faces storms. It is in the sea that the, the ship faces huge winds or great winds, the turbulent waters or the rough sea. It has to go to the sea and there it has to come across all such things. Safety is not the highest aim of the ship. It's not with that purpose that ship is being made. It's being made to go into the sea. Same way St. Thomas teaches us. The mission of a Christian is not to just a safe life or to play down safe. That's not the motto of a Christian. The motto of the Christian is to follow Jesus. And when we radically follow Jesus, there's going to be difficulties. There are going to be challenges, there are going to be storms, and we are going to hit rough patches. We heard what happened when Peter, when Peter and John gave the reply, the council members. They ordered them to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what will we do with them? For it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them. We cannot deny it, but to keep it from spreading further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. What is happening? The council members have come to know that a miracle has happened. They are witnessing that. They are approving that. A crippled beggar has been healed. They are not denying the miracle. They are approving it. But instead of believing in the one who, with whose name that miracle has been performed, they are, trying, they are trying to stop that from spreading. That's what the world in which we are living even today. There are so many people, so many people who don't want to believe in the Lord or in the power of God. And so what happens? When we go with faith, we are going to be made fun of. We are going to be discouraged. What is our attitude at that time? This has been from the beginning. It's not that today we are going to have those people. Even in the time of the apostles. Even in the time of Jesus. Such people were there. Who see the things and yet don't believe. In the time of Jesus we know. He is performing a great miracle. He is he's raising Lazarus. He is bringing the dead man out of the tomb. And the word of the Lord says, many people believed in him, but some others, they went and they plotted against him. Because their argument is this, if we allow him to go like this, many more people will follow him. So let us kill him. They are approving the miracle of Jesus, but they don't want to believe in Jesus. Same is happening with the apostles. The council members have seen the miracle, but they don't want to believe. They want to stop that news from spreading. Even today, you go out into the world, you speak about the Lord, you speak about His power, people will not believe. You will come across such people. But the word of the Lord says, let us not be discouraged. Let's not be disappointed. Let's continue to do our duty. Our duty has been given by the resurrected Lord. Go into the world and speak about the crucified Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like a child who crosses for the dear And who delights to feel his presence near Just like a child whose mind has not
just like a child, just like a child, so weak he cannot stand, but who holds firm and tight his mother's hand, just like a child. Like a child, here I come. Here I come. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Here I come, just like a child, just like a child who trusts his father dear and who delights to feel his presence near. Just like a child whose mind has not a doubt. Whose heart is never proud? Here I come, oh Lord. Here I come, just like a child. Here I come, oh Lord. Here I come, just like a child. Like a child, O oh God. Hallelujah. I come to you, O oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallowed be thy name. Hallelujah. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Just like a child, I come to you, O God, together with my Jesus. My Jesus, my Lord, I come to you just like a child to worship you, to adore you, to surrender my life at your feet just like a child. I come to you, O God, trusting in your mercy, in your compassion, just like a child, O God, with confidence in your love, just like a child, with great joy in your presence, just like a child, O God, with delight in my heart, I come to you, to worship you, to adore you, my Abba, my Father, my God, my Creator, just like a child. I'm there in your presence. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. We are in the presence of our Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is truly present here giving us Jesus, his son, in the Holy Eucharist. He gave his son to us in Jordan, my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. The Heavenly Father gave us his son, Jesus, as the Lord and Savior, and we are united with him. At the moment of baptism, we become one with him, and here we stand with Jesus. And the Heavenly Father is giving us the Holy Spirit. God's own Spirit is sending upon us to teach us to pray. We do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Holy Spirit dwelling within us teaches us to pray. Offering our inexpressible groanings to the Heavenly Father. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, here I come just like a child with the confidence of a child in the love of the dad with great joy in your protection. I, we come to you, O oh God. Lord, we surrender our lives at your feet. We place our life. You are our God. You care for us. More than any father has cared for any son or daughter, you care for us. 
and you are there by our side at every moment. Jesus, that's what you revealed to us about Abba, Father. You gave us the courage and confidence to call God Abba, our Father. As you offered your life in the hands of the Abba, here I come to do your will. Jesus, we want to say that with you. To the Abba Father, here I come to do your will, to surrender our lives to him on the cross. Oh, Jesus, you said, Abba, in your hands, I command my spirit. And the greatest joy of our heart is, Abba is waiting for us to accept us as his children, to fill us with his love, to guide us by the hand at every moment. At this moment, this precious moment, oh Jesus, in your presence, we want to offer our life. And we want to offer everything of our life. Everything that happens to us is of great care for Abba, Father, a father caring for his children, Abba, standing with Jesus, your son, our Lord, we offer to you our life. Here I am. Here I am, Abba, my pain, my joy, my health, my body, my past, my future, my family, my aspirations, my expectations, my plans for the future, I offer it all to you. Every sin that I committed against you, only you will understand me and accept me and forgive me. And with the one prayer, forgive us our trespasses. I offer to you every, every sin of my past, my past I offer to you. Here's my past I offer to you. Father, my future. I lay it down. I surrender it all to you. I surrender it all to you. Here's my future. I lay it down. I lay it down. I lay down my future. I, I do not know. I do not know what my future is I going to be. It all but you know it all. Abba, you know it all. Everything is according to your plan. And you will turn everything to my good with that confidence, with that hope in your love. I offer, I lay down my life. I lay down my life, my future to you, O oh God.
I lay down my present, my pains, my aches, all that I am, I lay down. I belong to you, I want to belong to you, to you alone, Abba. I, I lay down, I lay down my pains. I know you will touch me, you will heal me. I know you will forgive me. I know you will, you will never allow me to commit a sin. Lord, here I am to lay down all my pains to you. Here's my pain, I lay it down. Here's my pain, I lay it down. I lay it down. I surrender it all to you. I surrender. You promised us whoever would ask the Father for the Holy Spirit, the Father will give the Holy Spirit the one blessing, the one gift we ask of you, Jesus. Pray, pray to Abba that we may receive the Holy Spirit, God's one Spirit to descend upon us and fill us, that we may be filled and led by your Spirit. Jesus, give us your spirit. Abba Father, anoint us with the Holy Spirit. and lead us Holy Spirit living water you will never dry up in my heart living spring gushing forth all the time complete control of my life my words Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come and fill me. We are in, We're in your, your presence. presence. Fill us with your power, oh Lord. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, 
All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us journey with our Lord Jesus Christ through the most precious hours of our salvation. Inviting you for the Passover retreat led by Father Augustin Valuran. The retreat will be held at Divine Retreat Center Muringur from the 10th of April Palm Sunday at 10 a.m. and concludes with the Good Friday service on April 15th at 1 p.m. For details of the Holy Week retreat, email us at divineretreatcenter at gmail.com. The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3,000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged, the destitute women and children, the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families. If you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of almsgiving, we invite you to send your love offering to Divine Charitable Trust CD account number 0402231000014 HDFC Bank Chalakudi branch IFSC code HDFC 00004022 and email the details to divine retreat center at gmail.com.